Hi guys, this is Paranormal Video Gamer, and this is going to serve as my review for the X Game 601 system. Now, um, I've seen a lot of negative reviews. A lot of the reviews here on YouTube uh, don't really go through um, the game itself and, and, and show you like all the games of the actual system itself. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit more detailed of a review. Uh, it's going to show you some of the games, and it's actually going to show you some gameplay of those games on some of them, so you kind of get an understanding of uh, the games itself. Now, as you can see from the list, uh, there's 12 right here. Some of them that, uh, a lot of these I don't really know. Um, I'm obviously Double Dragon Advance. Uh, this is the Neo Geo um, portion of the device. And a lot of these games, again, I don't really know. Um, I didn't grow up with a lot of these games, but I'm, I'm sure I'm going to find them, and I am absolutely loved them. Um, but yeah, as you can see from this first list, there's 12 games here, and uh, maybe some of you guys recognize them. I personally don't recognize um, a lot of these games. Um, Street Fighter, obviously I do recognize. Alien vs. Predator, I recognize. Um, even 1944, I recognize, but... Uh, some of these I don't recognize, like Ring of Destruction, um, Cyberlip, no, I don't recognize this one, uh, but I do remember the Punisher that came out, and uh, that was a lot of fun uh, in terms of the games. Um, I will say, uh, let, me, let me put this on because it's actually kind of cool. Um, I will say that some of the games that you see in the system um, do not have screenshots or they are incorrect screenshots of what the game actually is so you'll see an x game logo instead of actually seeing what the game is you know like it's uh, cover screen used to be uh, so if you do buy this system please understand that um, they were kind of, I think they were kind of rushing to try to get it out um, but it is this game is actually by Capcom and it's actually one of the most fun games uh, that I remember playing um, one of the cool things about this particular game um, is that it kind of reminds me of, I don't know if you've ever played um, Streets of Rage, uh, but the, it's kind of got that general feel of Streets of Rage, um, maybe even uh, Final Fight is another one that kind of reminds me of this particular gameplay. And these games were fun back then because they were just simple games, you went over, you beat up things, and uh, you, at the end of the day, you just had fun playing the game. And uh, you got two, three, four people to join you while you were playing. And they were just so much fun. Um, and it's one of those things where it's just really fun. You can actually save your games in here. Um, that's the cool thing about this. You can actually save your games. So if you decide that you get to a certain point, you can either save it on the SD card, um, which this system actually does allow you to have a mini SD card, um, and you can put a bunch of stuff on there, and it saves within a, a matter of a couple seconds, as you can see. And then uh, I can come back later and actually uh, load it up, and it'll play directly from there, uh, from the main menu. So as we continue here, there's a couple of games, uh, again, I don't recognize, just because these are games that I never played. Uh, I never had them in my collection. Um... Art of Fighting, I heard about, never actually played it. Darkstalkers, played it. Love that particular game. I don't know if it's the this actual game or the, the first actual game or what the deal is. Uh, Mega Man 1 and 2, uh, obviously two classic games. These, though, if I remember reading correctly, these are actually the remake. And I'm going to take a look at this real quick. Um, these are actually the remake of the games. Um and it, it's one of those things where um, when they remake something, they remake it because they're, they're hoping to improve it. And uh, a lot of people didn't really like uh, this particular remake. Um, winners don't use drugs. Yeah, they do. They use it on the weekend, man. No, I'm just joking. But, uh, yeah, so I can definitely tell that this is a remake um, because... The way that the cartoon character looks. Uh, the original Mega Man 2, he was standing on top of a building. Uh, this one, he's standing on the edge of a cliff. Uh, so this is 
most likely the remake version of this game. And um, they probably remade this game uh, because they were kind of hoping that uh, someone would buy it, and uh, a lot of people uh, didn't. And I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look to see why they didn't buy it. They probably didn't buy it because it it kind of reminds me too much of the cartoon. And not to say that's a bad thing, but sometimes when you make something look too much like something else, um, it, it's just not the same quality. Plant Man. Oh, that's a wonderful name. Go. Go. All right. All right. So Plant Man's actually he just kind of runs into you. It's not really doing much of anything. It's just kind of walking around there. We'll see if I beat him and, and um, see how easy it is. They give you a lot of health in this particular game. I don't, I, I don't remember some of these games because, like I said, a lot of them I didn't have growing up as a kid. And um, even when I got older, there were a lot of games I never, I never tried out because that was kind of like, eh. and he was actually quite easy to beat. Okay, so basically that's just a bunch of power stuff. Okay, so, it's interesting. Now, I am using the AV cable to record uh, the video for this. Uh, the reason I'm not using HDMI is because I had some issues with HDMI, and I don't know if that's my recording device or if it's um, something with the system. I'm going to have to look into it. Uh, but it works pretty good on the, um, on the AV cables. Oh, Dungeons & Dragons. I heard about these games. I never actually got a chance to play them, though. So it's kind of cool that they added that. Uh, Arrow Fighter. Yeah, a lot of... They, they, uh, that's another thing that I kind of noticed about a lot of these um, third-party Japanese systems. They, uh, they added a lot of games that didn't come out in the U.S. They added a bunch of games that never got released in the U.S. It was mostly games from uh, their uh, area. Uh, as you can see, some of these games don't have uh, cover images, uh, or if they do have a cover image, uh, a lot of times they're wrong. They're not exactly right. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to uh, upload uh, a little bit of gameplay uh, from... Uh, the HDMI perspective and then the AV perspective uh, so you can see the difference between the two. Um, and uh, one thing with the HDMI, again, it might be my recording device. I don't really know. It is something I'm going to have to look into. Um, it It's weird because what will happen is uh, during the recording process, the system will actually uh, reset itself. Or, in many cases, um, the recording device loses the signal from the HDMI. And I think it's just the way that the HDMI uh, has been put on. I don't think they used a really good HDMI port, honestly. Uh, it does kind of look a little cheap. Um, but maybe that, again, it might be something to do with the settings. Um, and uh, I really don't know. So... Uh, I'll be back here with a couple games, a, a, a video to a game, and uh, I will continue uh, talking. And uh, first up, AV gameplay.
All right, so that gives you a basic understanding of uh, the game itself uh, from the AV perspective. So you can actually see uh, what it looks like when you're using AV cables. Um, so we'll continue on the list here. Um, a lot of these games, again, I don't really know. Magic Sword I've heard about. Um, let's see here, I'm trying to see. Okay, that's... So you get 113 games uh, in the Neo Geo uh, game library uh, that's on this particular system, the X Games 600. Um, and a lot of the games aren't bad. A lot of them... That I was kind of curious about this one. Um, I didn't know what exactly this one was and I was very curious when I saw it the other day and uh, I'm gonna play just a couple minutes of the game okay so it's a soccer game okay so basically just probably your standard everyday soccer game yeah that's what it's gonna be all right we're gonna team oh yeah great Team USA, D overall. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, so I'm going against Britain. This this ought to be fun. I'm not going to play the full game. Oh, jeez. They're on fire. Graphically, it's not bad. Um, I mean, it, it, it the system itself handles pretty well. Uh, again... Some slight issues with recording uh, on HDMI, but again, that might be just be my system uh, that I use to record. Uh, but, I mean, it doesn't look too bad, uh, graphically-wise. Uh, and it looks really good on HDMI TV. Uh, I do have to say that they, the HDMI uh, you know, port that they have on it is actually pretty decent. It's just i got to figure out why it's not recording. So, okay, that takes care of that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reload uh, HDMI recording so you guys can see that, and then you'll be able to take a uh, comparison uh, between the two. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, this is the actual uh, HDMI video capture. As you can see, there is a bit of a slowdown effect on the HDMI capture. I don't know why this is. Uh, I'm going to try contacting the manufacturer and um, see if it's a recording device issue or if it's the actual device itself. Um, but this is what it looks like. And as we go back to Game Boy Advance, you'll see that there's Pokemon Red, uh, Leaf Green Edition, which was very cool. I like the added Crash Bandicoot uh, series, uh, Mario Advance, Mario Kart. Uh, Mario vs. Donkey Kong, um, a lot of really good classic games, um, and even Dr. Mario is uh, in here, there's Sonic Advance, um, oh, I gotta, I gotta point this out, Driver 3 uh, was one of the biggest disappointments in the history of video games, um, I was kind of glad I never bought Driver 3 when it came out, um, I gotta tell this kind of story too. Um, when Driver 3 came out, I was a big Driver 2 fan. I loved Driver 2, and, uh, absolutely loved it, and I'm gonna put this on here and show you the gameplay from this. This is the Game Boy Advance version of this, and it's absolutely rancid. Um, but I love Driver 2, and, uh, I was so excited for Driver 3, I thought they were gonna make some really good improvements. I thought, okay... How can you not make good improvements to the next driver game? I mean, that's kind of like a no-brainer, you know? And um, then Driver 3 got released, and we found out that that was a complete cluster hell of a game. And uh, the Game Boy Advance game, as you can see, is uh, no exception to this rule. It's pretty bad. Um, in terms of gameplay-wise, in terms of graphic-wise, in terms of everything-wise, um, the best way to describe dr uh, this particular game, Driver 3 on Game Boy Advance, I think what happened during the development process, I think they went to go polish a turd, and they ended up polishing the wrong one. 
And I think they were trying to polish this game to be more Grand Theft Auto. And instead of getting Grand Theft Auto 2.0, we got Driver 3 that has cars that drive around like bathtubs. Like, look at the way that this thing handles. This thing, you can run into a cop and the cop's not going to do anything. He's just going to be like, oh, okay, I'll let that slide, citizen. You can, you can go ahead and hit me, but you can hit a bush and the bush feels pain. The bush probably feels more pain than the cop did. I mean, just me looking at this gives me my, my eyes are in pain right now. Uh, it's pretty bad. Um, not It's not the system's fault. I want to make that perfectly clear. It's just the way that they developed this game for the Game Boy Advance. It's pretty bad, as you can see. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, you can see, you know how bad a game is when you go look and everything starts to warp? It's because they did not take their time to develop this game. This game could have been really awesome on Game Boy Advance, uh, but they, they neglected to do so. They kind of just wanted to rush it out the door. So, uh, but, oh, you know, overall, the system handles the majority of Game Boy Advance games really well, surprisingly well. Um, the majority of the games are really good uh, in terms of uh, not skipping and doing other things. If you've got an HDMI TV, it works really well. It's just recording-wise. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to record uh, HDMI game footage without it doing some weird stuff. And again, that just might be in my recording device. Uh, I don't know if that's the case, but if it is, um, that's just one negative thing out of a lot of positive things about this system. Now, I'll be completely honest, the reason I bought this system is because of the Nintendo collection that's in this system. Some of these games are really hard to find online. Uh, some of them are nearly impossible to find online. Now, there are a lot of third-party Mario games in here, and you'll see down the list there's Mario 4 and... Uh, Mario Brothers 2 and 6 and things like that that never came out. There's Angry Birds. Um, this the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games is another reason I bought it because I grew up with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, especially this particular game right here, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Um, this was actually the arcade game, uh, but I don't know why it's Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. I don't know. I don't remember that as a kid. Uh, being in the title, uh, as far as I know, it was always Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, maybe they, maybe Konami changed it at some point uh, because they didn't, they didn't want to get in trouble. Um, when this came out in 1991, I was 11 years old, and me and my brother, uh, my brother Greg, we uh, we went to a local. Um, best way to describe it, we went to a local uh, store, kind of like. Um, Target of today or Walmart of today and uh, in the very front part of the store used to be old arcade machines I, I know a lot of people that are watching this are like what's an arcade machine um, an arcade machine used to be a video game machine that they used to put in stores and you would have to pay 25 cents to play a game and they were very popular uh, back in the 1980s and 1990s and then when, you know, Sony came out with the PlayStation and a couple other systems came out, uh, people could afford to bring video games home. And um, me and my brother, we played this particular game, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a lot um, in that grocery store. I, I remember um, my mom actually gave us, I think it was like $15. And back then, $15 was a lot of money. Uh, if, if you had $15, that's uh, the equivalent of probably about $60 today. Uh, my mom gave us that money and said, just go ahead. Go ahead and play as many games as you guys can on all these quarters. And me and my brother Greg, we played this until our thumbs literally were, were calloused. And um, we had blisters on our thumbs because we were grabbing the joystick so hard. And uh, it's one of the greatest memories I have of uh, my childhood playing this game. And uh, those are some pretty big balls, I have to say. Um, but yeah, 
you can also, one thing that's really cool about this, if the game starts to skip because of the frame rate issue of the actual game itself, you can actually add this skipping um, effect. And what it does is it makes the game run a little bit smoother. Now, I have tested it. Some of the games work really well on it. Other ones do not. So it's really a hit or miss type of situation with using the skip feature of the X Games 600. So as we continue down the list here, there's Rockman, which is basically Mega Man. Uh, it's it literally Mega Man. It, it, no, it's ands and buts about it. Um, these ones are weird. These three are weird. They're not really Pokemon games. I mean, they are, but they're not like the Game Boy Advance games. They're very different. Um, if you do buy this system, be aware of that. Uh, they're very weird. Let's just put it that way. Robocop, I remember that. That was a hard game back in the day. Very difficult game. Uh, Island Adventure, not a bad series. Aladdin, not a bad series. The Batman game, this is interesting because the Batman game, I think this is the Sunsoft version of this game. And if it is, which I don't know why they decided to choose Batman or, uh, Arkham Origin for the artwork. Again, when you buy this system, I don't know who programmed it, but... Whoever did didn't look up the information, and yeah, this is this is a Sunsoft game. This is actually a pretty fun game uh, back in the day. Um, this was a, a lot of fun to play and pick up and learn. It wasn't very difficult to learn this game. Um, took a little, you know, it takes a little bit of practice, but everything takes a little bit of practice. I haven't played this game in I don't even know how long. Yeah, I'm Batman. I'm gonna jump everywhere. Come on, Joker. I'm gonna hit you so hard. Hey, stop using a flamethrower on me. Joker. There we go. But it's actually a fun game, uh, believe it or not. It's a, it's a lot of fun of a game. And uh, I'm glad that they included it in this collection. Uh, because they didn't have to. Now, the only thing that was kind of weird about this particular game is the Ninja Gaiden type of style of jumping um, and then you had to you had to make sure that when you're jumping you weren't getting hit by another person because they come out of like nowhere and um, you can't get underneath the, the little bridge here which is kind of weird uh, but I mean I understand why they did it they were trying to do something unique oh boy yeah that's that's a bullet you don't want to take any of those that's a lot of that's a lot of bullets there we go oh boy Yeah, they, he don't. They, these bullet people, they don't like me. All right, I think I think you have boomerangs, if I remember. Yeah, you do. Okay, you can actually use boomerangs, bat or what they call batterings, uh, to take out enemies from a distance. So it actually works out pretty good. And, and like I said, the gameplay, you know, wise works out really well. And um, the game is a lot of fun. Uh, so it's a, it really is a plus, at least for me, um, having it in my collection. Um, and not having to go out and buy the actual physical copy. I've got all the games that uh, I really wanted in this collection. Um, Battletoads and Double Dragon, I remember those two. Blaster Master, that's a classic game. I, I want to uh, actually play that on my channel. Uh, that is just a, a huge fun game. Uh, and again, as you can see, a lot of the games don't have any type of uh, cover artwork whatsoever. Um, but you get a lot of games uh, from the Nintendo uh, portion of the system. Um, and it's, it's pretty impressive how many games they actually did add uh, to this particular system. Um, Castlevania 2, another good game. Uh, Kron's Quest, another great game. Let's see here. Ghostbusters was okay, not the greatest game in the world. Star Wars, there is a Star Wars game, but I, I don't recommend it. It's pretty it's pretty bad. Operation Wolf wasn't a bad game either. Uh, Punch-Out, legendary game. I don't know about this particular Punisher one. I'm going to have to look that up. Ren and Stimpy Show, that was an awesome game. Uh, River City Ransom, another great game. All right, let's see here. I, some of these games I've never heard of, so... 
Swamp Thing, never heard of it. Tecmo Wrestling, never ever heard of it. Um, yeah, so you get 132 games so far. 144 games. Iron Sword. I remember that game. That game actually wasn't too bad. So there's like 160 some odd games here. Bionic Commando. Caveman Games was actually a lot of fun. That reminds me so much of um, California Games. I remember when Caveman Games came out. That was actually a lot of fun to play. And then it goes right back. So you get 154 Nintendo Games uh, for the amount of money you spend on the system. Then you go over to the Sega Games here. There's a lot of a lot of Sega games uh, in this collection as well. Road Rash, obviously, being two of the highlights uh, of the actual game itself. Um, just a lot of fun uh, playing those games. You got Golden Axe one and two, um, Castle of Illusion. That's another really good game. Uh, Animaniacs, another great game. Blaster Master 2 was redone. I don't know why they redone it on Genesis, but I played a little bit of it. It was okay. I have a, I, I, There's a lot of games I want to play all the way through and see how well they are. They even have a Spider-Man in here, which kind of surprises me a little bit. Streets of Rage. Uh, Batman Returns, another Batman game. Um, uh, for the love of God, don't play Super WrestleMania. Uh, you'll be frustrated to the point where you will... Probably throw the controller at the TV and probably swear like a sailor. Uh, Champion Pro-Am Racing was actually a pretty good racing game back in the day. Um, it was a lot of fun. Let's see here. Another Battletoads. Uh, Dune was another really cool game. and I actually liked the remake that they did uh, back in 2000, I think. Uh, they did a remake of... Uh, Dune, and it was a really good remake. Um, and this one still holds up, even on the old Genesis system uh, software. And um, it's a damn good game. And uh, definitely one of the highlights of the collection. Uh, let's see here. Clue actually was a pretty good thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, upload some of the video from that. Uh, it's not bad. It's actually... A, it, was a lot of fun back then. Um, Tiny Toon Adventures, I remember that. Let's see here. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, I remember that. Monopoly, which I'm going to also do a video on. Ooze, I remember. Ooze was just a weird game. I remember when that came out, and I was, I was at a friend's house, and he had gotten it from somebody. Paperboy's in here, too. Um, but he would gotten it from somebody. It was just a really weird game from what I remember. Risk is in here. Star Trek Deep Space Nine. That actually wasn't a bad game, either. It wasn't the best game in this in uh, Star Trek-wise, but it wasn't too, too horrible, from what I remember. Um, so your Dark Castle, that was a... Very difficult game to play and very frustrating game to play. So if you do play it, please be aware. Uh, again, it's going to be one of these ones that you're probably going to take the controller, throw it into your TV, um, possibly um, throw it at yourself and probably hit yourself in the head um, because it makes more sense to do that. Uh, sort of a million, awesome game. That's another game right there, Toe Jam and Earl, that uh, I actually really wanted, and it's very hard to find a, a, a original copy of uh, Toe Jam and Earl um, on the actual system, so having it on this collection is actually a pretty cool uh, incentive to buy it, but you get 134 games for the Genesis system, and now we go into uh, the NES. You only get 60 games for NES, but a lot of them are mostly Mario, and... Um, Got a couple of Rockman. Mortal Kombat 2 is one of them. You get uh, a lot of Sega Sonic games of Jurassic Park. Uh, Yoshi's Cookie, never played it. 
heard about it. I don't know why they put Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on there, but maybe somebody reminds me. Primal Rage, I remember. Adam's Family, I remember. Mario Time Machine. Preschool Fun, I never knew even existed. So it's a lot of games that are on here that, you know, it's just really things that I never knew existed or I never had an opportunity to play. Urban Strike, though, was a lot of fun. I'm kind of curious about Urban Strike here. Um... But, it, you know, a lot of these games play, actually, surprisingly well uh, on the system. Now, again, I am using AV cables. I'm not using the HDMI port. Uh, if you go back and uh, look at the HDMI uh, video that I recorded for this, even though it's much better in terms of video quality, um, with a recording device, for some odd reason, it doesn't pick it up um, correctly, and there's little like skips and skips of frame rate um, it might be something to do with the recording device itself or it could be the system um, again I'm gonna have to look into it I think honestly it's the system itself I don't think it's my recording device I think the system HDMI um, when they came out with it I don't think that they were using the best HDMI uh, input so that's something that I'm definitely gonna have to look into and seeing about improving uh, oh boy that that's gonna ruin my weekend yeah right so as you can see it works pretty good in terms of gameplay wise um, if I stop running into things but I mean no I don't want to pick up stuff go away but it works pretty good for a little tiny system and you know uh... oh boy okay Oh, there's people there. We gotta, we gotta save the people. Then we gotta, then we gotta kill the shark. All right, we got, we gotta save these people. Goodbye, Mr. Shark. That's what you get. But for the overall review of this system, I give this system a resounding 4 out of 5 stars. Only because of the fact that obviously there's something wrong with the HDMI port. Uh, the games and stuff, the majority of the games I've tested, they work perfectly fine. The system powers on with very little trouble. Um, it was very simple to set up, really. Um, very simple to uh, understand how it works and the control on it. It takes a little bit of time to get used to. I will say though, um, if you do buy this system, please be aware that you get what looks like two PlayStation controllers. You don't get what looks like um, Sega Genesis controllers like you would think if you were playing a Sega game or Nintendo game or you, you would think you would get like multiple controllers. No, you get uh, two uh, what look like literally third party PlayStation controllers and um, they actually work surprisingly well, so I hope you've enjoyed this review, and uh, if you did like it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.